five biggest HVAC upgrades that waste your money. In today's video, we're going to cover some of those upgrades, things I think you should watch out for. And I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Boulder, but we'll get to them in just a moment. Who am I? My name is Josh. I owned a heating and air business for over 10 years, grew it every year. And one of my secrets was giving homeowners transparency like what you're going to experience in this video. So if you get anything out of this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you stick around to number five, I bet you will be surprised. I bet there are some professionals in our trade that will be surprised by my last one. But let's dive into this. Number one is overpriced smart thermostats. A lot of thermostats on the market today are getting quite pricey. We're seeing hundreds of dollars for some of these thermostats and they're competing with some of the communicating thermostats that we see out there. We expect a communicating thermostat to be a little more expensive, to be kind of pricey for good reasons, right? It's a communicating thermostat. It can do way more because of that technology. It can get error messages sent and so on. But some of these smart thermostats that we see just in a hardware store that you could go into this evening, we're seeing hundreds of dollars for some of those thermostats and the capabilities just aren't the same. Yeah, they can do some of these geofencing and other energy saving technologies, but is there enough energy savings at the end of the day for it to make sense for you to go that route. And I think in a lot of cases, the answer is no. And partly because some thermostats today, like today's sponsor, they make a couple different thermostats and they are much more competitively priced with just as many capabilities, if not more. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment, but I would just say, be careful on just because it's a really expensive thermostat, just because it looks really cool does not necessarily mean you're going to get all your money back, even though it might say you will on the box. Oh, this thermostat's it's smart. It's so energy saving. Not always. Number two, electronic air filters or electronic air cleaners, electrostatic, blah, 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 all the different words that we see used. But any of those filters that they're using the same technologies like electronic air filters to filter that air, but it's not actually using the media. Maybe it might have media in there that needs to be cleaned or replaced, but a lot of them, the technology is all in the static that it creates. It's able to catch particulates. And I actually think it's a cool technology. It's able to catch very small particulates compared to some of the media filters out there. But the biggest reason that I don't like them, and my old boss used to say this all the time, is they're rendered useless because of maintenance. That unless you're staying on top of that, unless you're cleaning them quite often, and a lot of times it involves a professional to do so. I did a whole video on this exact subject that I'll put a link to down in the description of this video, but those filters are kind of rendered useless and they're quite pricey at times. And the other problem with that, uh, I think, is it also gives homeowners this false sense of security, this false sense of I'm breathing good, clean air because I've spent lots of money on this device. At the end of the day, especially if maintained, there are just some other better options out there. But if you do stay on top of it, that's the comment I got on that video. And I think it should be noted if you are the type that you know how all those things work, you're willing to say, crawl into tight spaces or wherever that filter is located and pull those cells out and get them clean up and stuff and then dry out and put them back in and all the things you have to do to do it properly, then maybe you'll be fine. Before I get to number three, let's run out to my studio that I'm building to make YouTube videos. And I want to show you a really cool product. Let's take a break from the upgrades I think are a waste of money and talk about an upgrade that I think is worth the money. It's made by the sponsor of today's video, Boulder. So thank you to Boulder but I couldn't think of any product that would be better for a video like this because of all the upgrades we've already talked about and we're going to talk about, this one is the one upgrade I think that you should definitely take a look at. And a lot of folks that have ductless mini splits, you've got the remote control, maybe it comes up missing, you don't have any Wi-Fi connectivity, here is your answer. This is the Boulder Klima. Not only is it an amazing looking thermostat with that mirror finish, so it'll fit into any space. Now, the Boulder Klima is a smart thermostat and controller. It's designed specifically for ductless ACs like mini split ACs, window ACs, and portable ACs. It's compatible with all brands and ages of ACs, so it doesn't matter what brand you have. I'm going to show you my unit in just a moment, but some people have said they think that it only works with Wi-Fi enabled 
units and that's not the case this will work whether you have wi-fi or not it just has wi-fi ability it allows you to be able to control the unit via wi-fi you don't have to have it it's like a nest or eco bee but specifically for mini split acs that central thermostats like nest can't control replace your traditional remote that often gets lost with a plug-in and play smart controller and thermostat that can be set up in less than three minutes bring your mini split into the 21st century airbnb or short-term rental managers really love the product because they can manage multiple properties from one point and make sure guests do not take advantage of free bills to abuse the air conditioner i'm going to do a video in the future dedicated only to this thermostat we're going to go through the setup and all the features show you what the app looks like but just real quick as a teaser let me pull it out of the box so you can see what it looks like it's such a cool looking little thermostat that mirrors i mean it's so cool and we're going to set it up now let me show you ignore the mess this is a very uh in construction space i'm going to be building a youtube studio for more videos like this one so ignore my mess but we've got a mini split in here a Daikin mini split that I put in and I'm gonna be controlling it with the Klima. Daikin's another one of our sponsors. Don't you hate it when people promote products that they don't actually use? I use my products. We're gonna be mounting the Klima over here on this wall. I think it's gonna look awesome. And then it'll be able to control our Daikin mini split up there. I'll put a link down in the description of this video. You've gotta get one of these. This is a game changer. I hate most apps and I love Boulder's app. And by the way, the price point is on point as well, if I do say so myself. Check out that link. Now let's get back to the rest of our list. Five biggest HVAC upgrades that waste your money. And number three is zoning systems when ductwork is the problem. I think a lot of companies out there will throw money at a heating and air system like zoning, for example, when it's actually a ductwork problem. We've talked about this in other videos and talking about there are times when it is a ductwork problem. There are times when it is a zoning problem and having a good contractor, being able to talk through that with you and look for the most budget friendly option is sometimes the best remedy for those cases. I think spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a full proper zoning system to try to alleviate an actual ductwork problem. In a lot of cases, if we're talking about a house that's all one story, or at least that system services one story of the home and everything is balanced properly, in most cases, at least in air conditioning or heating mode, you should be able to get the same temperatures out of those vents and the rooms, right? And I think some of that involves some proper air balancing, some of that's duct sizing and so on. Some of it's common sense, right? You got a really large room and you got this little tiny bathroom. They don't both get an eight inch duct, right? You know, there, there's some thought process there and you got to use some common sense too. But if you've got a company coming in and they're trying to sell you zoning to fix a duct work problem, I'm not saying the zoning won't end up working because you are going to be closing off parts of the home when that zone is not calling. But at the end of the day, sizing some of the ducts properly and dialing in the air balancing might actually fix your problem. Number four is indoor air quality products today without actually testing, right? So there are a lot of products out there. I'll put a link to one down in the description of this video where you can actually test the air in your home. And one of the things we always did at my company is we would test before and after installing a product. There's a lot of products out there making some big claims saying that they'll clean the air in your home or do this or that. And only to find out after actually installing that product, if you test the air, you might find out that that product is either useless or at bare minimum, not effective enough. And one of the policies we always had at my company is we might not be able to give you a 100% full refund because, you know, I had to pay my guys. But if we sold you an indoor air quality product, especially a pricey one, and you're just not getting what you thought you would out of that product. I've heard all kinds of stories, right? If you're just not completely happy with that product, having a heating and air company that's willing to pull that product now back out of the system and give you a refund or at least a percentage of your investment because it ended up not actually being the solution. I think that's huge. I think that you should be able to know that what you bought and spent lots of money on is actually 
taking good care of your family, actually cleaning the air in your home or ventilation or humidity or whatever it is you're trying to fix the problem of, let's make sure it's actually doing its job. Number five, I think this is gonna be really surprising to a lot of folks, and that is anything that's super expensive. And I mean anything, whether we're talking adding solar to your house or some of these products out there that do different things with the electricity, some of the products out there that are offered as packages with some of the companies. I remember talking to a guy once, we were talking about how a fire company replaced a capacitor that had failed. He was telling me that, they don't replace capacitors, they sell packages. They sell a full electrical package where they replace the capacitor that's failed, but they also replace the contactor, some other components possibly, maybe installing a hard start or soft start kit, and they offer that as a package, and then they offer it at triple the price, what we would have been at replacing those same components because it's a package. And the whole problem here is, yes, some of these things are might be good things, right? Replacing a failed capacitor is a good thing. Installing solar on your house might be a good thing. Some of these things we're covering are all maybe good things, but are they worth the absorbent price that you have to invest to get some of these products? And I think the answer in a lot of cases is a good hard no. If it's super expensive, maybe even sitting down and doing some rough math, have the contractor show you, hey, let's do some rough math here. How much money is, are we actually gonna save installing this product or your package? What, what am I getting out of this? And will I even live in this house long enough for years to come to get my money back? Will I save enough on my utility bills? And again, a lot of times the answer is no. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this down in the comment section. I bet some of you have a few stories on some of these topics. I love reading those. And some of those we will sometimes go over on our live show on Tuesday nights where we answer questions live. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I cover some of the energy wasters in our industry that I think homeowners should know. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.